Welcome to this course preview on Retail Economics and the Product Supply Chain from Category Management Knowledge Group. If you are in retail or work for a vendor who makes decisions that influence retailers in your industry, including category management, sales, and marketing, you need to be knowledgeable in this topic. Understanding retail math and inventory is imperative because ultimately these calculations impact the retailers income statement. The opportunity is for retailers and vendors including category management, sales and marketing to consider how the decisions and recommendations that they make affect the retailers overall business including inventory. This video will give you a snippet from our certified online course on Retail Economics and the Product Supply Chain, which will help you to think more strategically about how the decisions or recommendations you make to a retailer ultimately affect their overall financial results. Enjoy the course! Here are the learning objectives for this course. In the fully accredited training course, you will learn about a retailer's income statement and how it applies to the category manager or buyer's responsibility and the important measures associated with what a retailer is trying to accomplish. It's beneficial information for retailers, category analysts, sales and marketing teams to help them make more strategic decisions or recommendations for the retailer's business. I'll walk you through some of the content from Chapter 1, where we cover financial statements and most specifically the retailer's income statement. In this chapter, we also review the responsibilities of a retail category manager and how the work they do influences the sales line of the income statement. Let's get started. In every business, there is never-ending number crunching going on and the retail business is no different. The financial analysts have to look at the numbers from every angle to ensure ongoing profitability using their income statements or sometimes referred to as P&L statements. Category management teams within retail organizations have accountability or influence for different numbers within the financial statement based on the results of all of the categories combined. If you work for a retailer, it's important to understand how the day-to-day -day decisions that you make and how the measures that you track and or are responsible for drive the overall results in the financial statement. Financial statements are the best resource that we have access to, free of charge, to assess the performance of publicly traded companies. Every company with stock trading on NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, etc., has to file financial statements every quarter with Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. One place you can find these financial statements is on the www.sec.gov website. You can research on the web the stock performance of any publicly traded company in order to identify trends, challenges, opportunities, and threats specific to each company. The stock performance data is available for the current year, last year, last five years, last ten years, and all years since the company started to sell stock. The financial statements are like our medical charts. They tell us a lot about the health and profitability of a business. The top three financial statements are balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. In this course, we're going to focus on the income statement. Here's an example of an income statement from Walmart. Income statements may come with various terms. The most commonly used are statement of income, statement of earnings, statement of operations, and statement of operating results. Many professionals still use the term P&L, which stands for Profit and Loss Statement, but this term is seldom found in print these days. In addition, the terms Profits, Earnings, and Income all mean the same thing and are used interchangeably. Now let's look more in depth at the retailer's income statement. 
Here's a basic income statement for a retailer. Basically, the income statement shows how much money the company generated, revenue or sales, how much it spent, or expenses, and the difference between the two, or profit, over a certain time period. Revenue, also commonly known as sales, is generally the most straightforward part of the income statement. Often there's just a single number that represents all the money a company brought in during a specific time period. Although big companies sometimes break down revenue by business segment or geography. So this retailer sold goods to its customers for $328,600. Next is the cost of goods sold, which is the expense most directly involved in creating revenue. It represents the costs of producing or purchasing the goods or services sold by the company. For example, if a retailer pays a vendor $4 for a box of product when it sells to customers for $5. When it's sold, the retailer's cost of goods sold for the box of product would be $4. In our example, the company acquired those goods for a cost of $244,900. As a result, it earned $83,800 in gross profit, with a 25.5% gross margin. Retailers turn to the gross margin as an indication of the sales dollars remaining after subtracting the costs of purchasing merchandise. It provides managers with an indication of their ability to convert existing inventory into future cash. To figure gross margin, the gross profit from the income statement is divided by the business's net sales, also found on the income statement. The higher the number, the better. Operating expenses, also known as selling, general and administrative expenses, or SG&A, include employee costs, warehouse and store costs, depreciation of goods, and so on. This retailer's operating expenses are $63,400, or 19.3%, and $3,381 in non-operating expenses, including taxes and finance costs. Net income generally represents the company's profit after all expenses, including financial expenses, have been paid. This number is often called the bottom line and is generally the figure people refer to when they use the word profit or earnings. In this example, it's a total net income of $17,019 with a 5.2% net margin. If the net margin is below zero, there's a net loss or the retailer was unable to operate profitably. And those are the basics of the income statement. When you look at this retailer income statement, think about how the category management team can influence net margin within their categories. They can either increase sales, which is defined as all items scanned through the retail store's front-end system, decrease cost of goods sold, and they have limited influence in decreasing operating expenses. Obviously, category management is not the only department responsible for the results of the income statement, but for the purposes of this training course, we'll be focusing in on the areas that they are most accountable for. This includes the sales and cost of goods sold. Let's go through more detail on each of these, including some common retail math calculations associated with each. Here's a description of what category managers, or sometimes referred to as buyers, are responsible for. Their responsibilities are varied and comprehensive. In net, they're responsible for every aspect of the in-store retailing of a group of products, or categories, until those products are taken out the doors by a purchasing customer. Based on their responsibilities, a category manager's measures of success directly tie into their retailer's income statement. We're going to spend a lot of time understanding each of the areas that they can influence. 
Once again, sales results show up on the first line of the retailer's income statement. Even though a company's bottom line, or its net income, gets most of the attention from investors, the top line is where the revenue or income process begins. Achieving sales targets or budgets is another important measure that relates to sales for category managers. Category managers are usually given their targets by senior management. These targets, collectively, equal the total sales target for the retailer. They need to compare their targets or budgets to the actual sales results on an ongoing basis. First, they can calculate the difference between their target and actuals by subtracting the sales dollars year-to-date from the target sales year-to-date. In this example, Sales dollars year-to-date is $2,175,362 minus dollar budget year-to-date of $2,479,912 to equal a difference of negative $304,550. So year-to-date sales are negative $304,000 $550 behind budget. An index versus budget can also be calculated, which is the sales dollars year-to-date divided by dollar budget year-to-date, or in our example, $2,175,362 sales dollars year-to-date divided by $2,479,912 budget dollars years to date equals an 88 index versus budget. An index over 100 indicates that sales are ahead of budget, while an index below 100 indicates that sales are below budget. One of the key measures that category managers are evaluated on is sales performance versus budget. Something else that can influence sales is other income captured by the retailer. This can include over and above spending by vendors. Some vendors will offer deals and allowances based on ad space, promotional activity, or buying deals. This may be captured as other income and added into sales in the income statement. For retailers who have dead net pricing, the over and above spending may be allocated directly to price and would be included in the cost of goods sold calculations versus in other income. Other income can also include cash discounts that are paid by vendors if the terms are met when paying invoices within a specific amount of time. The intent of the discount is to speed payment and thereby provide liquidity to the vendor. As an example of a cash discount, 2% 10 net 30, meaning the retailer must pay within 30 days of the invoice, but will receive a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days of the invoice date. Trade spend occurs at the intersection between the vendor's brand strategies and the retailer's strategies. Trade spend marketing dollars can be in the form of promotional allowances, slotting or listing fees, or coop advertising, which goes towards things like hot prices, buy one get one freeze, flyers, display, new products, contests, and in-store features. We've now given you a glimpse of our certified course on retail economics and the product supply chain. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state-of-the-art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000, or a live session at a national or team meeting. Or if you're from a larger organization where many people would want to access the course, we can also make this course available for your use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless. Having solid finance and product supply acumen is necessary for many different roles for both retailers and vendors. 
The bigger opportunity is to combine the retail financial acumen learning with additional skill areas. Next, additional courses should be defined that are common within a specific department so that they can increase knowledge in the topic areas most relevant to their department's responsibilities. And finally, the curriculum should be refined based on the roles and responsibilities within different roles in the department. This ultimately leads to improved sales performance for your organization. Category Management Knowledge Group can work with you to help you set up your curriculum that achieves all three levels of training for your organization. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing the certified course, or working with us to help you determine custom sales training opportunities for your organization, which will ultimately lead to improved sales performance, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day and happy selling!